Each time U.S. philanthropist Aimed Khan returns to Ukraine, he begins by offering condolences for those killed in the war since his last trip. Over the past two and a half years, his group has provided over $50 million in aid to civilians and soldiers fighting to survive Russia's invasion. Some of those are already dead. For Khan, a U.S. government official turned philanthropist, those he supports are like family. He travels to meet them on the front lines and in war-torn cities. His closeness to those enduring the war also exposes him to the pain and loss they experience firsthand. When you're involved with people directly, you feel the pain of war, he says, moments after meeting a father who survived a bombing that killed his son. Khan and many other Americans across the U.S. political spectrum who support Ukraine's war effort, either through financial aid or voluntary combat, say the U.S., Ukraine's main ally, hasn't done enough to help Ukraine defeat Russia. They doubt Tuesday's U.S. elections will change that. Since the war began, the United States did manage to rally the allies to support Ukraine, but not in the way it should, said Khan, who was a campaigner for then-Democratic presidential candidate Bill Clinton in 1992. So my belief is that their strategy is not for Ukraine to necessarily win and for Russia to lose. He spoke to the Associated Press over the weekend in the eastern Kharkiv region, one of several stops on his planned route all located along the front line. The U.S. has provided over $59.5 billion in military aid since Russia invaded in 2022, yet many say Kiev's potential has often been stymied by American politics. Ukrainian officials say that promised weapons frequently arrive late. Zelensky's requests for an invitation to join NATO and permission to use Western-donated weapons to strike deeper into Russia have been met with caution by the Democratic administration of President Joe Biden over fears of escalation with a nuclear-armed Russia. Biden's vice president, the Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris, is likely to pursue a similar policy, while former President Donald Trump, the Republican nominee, has repeatedly taken issue with U.S. aid to Ukraine and might seek to further limit military support, though he also has cited an undetailed plan to end the war quickly. Meanwhile, Russia has succeeded in strengthening its alliances with Iran and North Korea, the latter reportedly sending troops to aid Russia's fight. If the war escalates, then we're in it and we're not even providing Ukraine enough to win, another U.S. philanthropist, Howard Buffett, said during a recent visit to Ukraine, his 16th since the outbreak of the war. And we've never had a strategy on how we're going to defeat Russia, Buffett said. Buffett, a Republican and son of billionaire investor Warren Buffett, focuses on humanitarian needs like infrastructure, agriculture, and demoning, and his foundation has contributed about $800 million to Ukraine. <laughs> Can you stand on this? Is it going to explode or what? <laughs> So whatever the Western strategy is, I mean, you have to be honest that it failed. But again, I'm not a pundit or anything. I'm just like a person who's here helping friends. But yeah, I, I feel that, um, you know, this entire process has been mismanaged because I, and I, I just, I, I feel it because of the number of funerals I've been to. That's very painful. You know, sort of like when you're, when you're involved with people directly, uh, you feel, feel the pain of, of war. I mean, I would just uh, emphasize to people that they should think of Ukrainians just like they think of themselves and their own communities. These are just people who all had normal jobs and all just want to live peacefully, raise their children, you know, take care of their parents as they go older. Uh, it's just, uh, and be free. I would just say to the American people and the future American president 
that they should really need to spend more time understanding who the people of Ukraine are, what the people of Ukraine are fighting for, um, and you know, sort of try and separate out the noise around it and the politics around it, and uh, really, really spend more time uh, understanding uh, what's happening here. Uh, and, and and I would I would urge whoever wins uh, to do that, and then try and seek a new way forward to to end this war. <laughs> Люди вже воюють не перший рік, ми вже три роки війни, і в нас людей набагато менше. Ми не можемо розмінюватися з людьми, як Росія, тому що у нас таких людських запасів просто немає. І я боюсь, що воно приведе до обвалу фронту, і найгірший випадок, ну, найгірша ситуація, яка може бути, це перехід під вплив політичної Російської Федерації, а то й втрата державності як такої. Ніхто відступати не буде, будемо робити свою роботу до тих пір, поки не заберемо все своє і заживемо новим прекрасним життям, дай Бог був на це надіється. You good? Are you reloaded? All right. Moving. Chista. Basically, my main, my main motivation for coming here is that uh, America always gets involved with foreign conflicts, uh, especially for people who are in need of help, to uh, not be oppressed by another country. So in this instance, it's Russia oppressing Ukrainians. So I was already serving in the U.S. Marine Corps when I heard about this, on deployment, actually. And I already decided my contract in the Marines was, was about to be finished. As soon as I can, I'll come here and uh, join the fight myself. It is very difficult because the U.S. is dealing with so many problems of our own right now. So that's why a lot of Americans are a little bit frustrated that this war is still going on. So they're feeling like less inclined now to send more of our tax money here and everything, which I understand. But as an individual that's been here since the beginning of the war, I see it, it is definitely needed. Means freedom, foremost. If you, if you see this flag, you either have the best friends ever or your worst enemies. Put it bluntly. <laughs>